Lord, fuck me. Hello, everyone. We are once again here to talk about Card Fight Vanguard Will Dress Season 3. For those of you who don't know why I haven't been doing this weekly, it's because it's bad. It's just really bad. It's just a boring, dull, corporate puppeted piece of schlock that's been put in front of us to just mindlessly consume so we'll buy more product. Except you don't, because half the decks are ass and everyone will just keep playing Gandiva. Um, yeah, so we're here to talk about five episodes, which I took like 24 hours to watch because I couldn't sit through more than one at a time without having to take a break. That's how bad this is. Uh, but yeah, I will say this much. I have ran the full gambit of emotions with this season. Uh, first I was angry, then I wanted to be understanding, and now I'm just numb. Let's see why I feel this way with our first episode, uh, Jinky versus Giyu. This is the worst one. <laughs> the whole premise is that Jinky has decided to go good. This was not earned, and this does not make any sense at all. Like, he just decides, after all the horrible shit he's done, that, yeah, I don't feel like it anymore. I'm just going to join the good guys, and I'm going to fight you, Giyu. Giyu, who is now just every generic, crackling, lunatic villain, thus erasing any interesting idea you could have about an evil AI. And effectively, all this is just leading to, you can keep Jinky in the story in case you want to give him more shit if he's popular, or you can reset Giyu in case you want more Dragon Tree support. This felt like nothing, and it is nothing, because then Jinky just fucks off for the rest of the season. Maya versus Masanori, I think is the guy's name. This is the good one. This is actually a legitimately good episode of television, because it throws all, it does what the Yu Yu versus Urara episode did. It throws all the crap out and just focuses on these two characters. The point of this episode is Toya finally facing off with Masanori and coming to terms and accepting what this man's influence has done with his life, both positively and negatively. Toya is never angry. He is never sad. He simply accepts what has happened to him and wants to move forward. Effectively, he is proving the point of the season that you don't need an AI or you don't need to like shut your emotions down. You don't need to change parts of yourself to become a better person. Toya did it by acknowledging his pain, by acknowledging his flaws and his weak points and is able to move on from that. And I like the idea that Masanori is just insane. He doesn't care about uniformers, openly says it's ridiculous, which I kind of loved that. He just wants chaos. He just wants anarchy. He thinks he's a bad human being and just accepts his role in life. But the idea that Toya says that something good still came from you being in my life means something. And the idea that that then leaves Masanori on this odd note, I think is actually really strong and powerful. Uh, then the final part of the episode happens. Also, seeing just how, seeing everyone with the stupid uniformers things just reiterates my constant point of how is the world not noticing that all their loved ones are becoming weird, emotionless dolls because of a new fucking app and some fancy barrettes. But whatever, we've harped on this enough. Um, but yeah, so then Donji jumps up at a tournament and Zakuza just won and is like, yo, Giyu, let's fuck. Fight. And Giyu's like, okay, because I, I totally have time to, like, show up and agree to this bullshit. Uh, and everyone is like, what the fuck is happening? But we'll go along with it because this world no longer makes sense. And then we have the first of our big climactic fights, Yu Yu versus Zakuza. This goes about as you expect it to until the end where Yu Yu has his big character defining moment for the season. And that is him being like, wait a minute. I hate the uniformers. That makes me a uniformer. No, except this is complete bullshit. Like the writers understand that making it your hero and villain are opposite sides of the same coin is juicy storytelling. What they don't get is how to implement it. Yu Yu being mad and scared at what the uniformers will do to the world is not the same thing as uniformers literally shutting off people's minds and remaking them into what they want. This is shallow and stupid. 
Oh, and then Zakuza just gives him his new ace card, which makes you wonder what Zakuza was doing here, except not really because who the fuck cares about Zakuza? Then we move on to Urara versus Tall Girl. Yeah, I'm not learning her name. This was so cringe. Like, none of this worked at all. The whole premise is Urara thinks she is genuinely friends with this girl who, from the minute she met her, set out to manipulate her, brainwash her, so she can be part of this crazy cult. And Urara's like, but I believe she's my friend. And we get flashbacks to when Urara was with uniformers, to which case, all we see are the scenes of this girl recruiting Urara to the cult. How is any of this wholesome or making me supposed to believe they're supposed to be friends? And then the end of it, to add insult to injury, uh, Urara's like, oh, well, I'm still a uniformer no this is so fucking stupid and oh my god they're dumb arguing it's supposed to be funny but it's just cringe now we can move on to our final episode and we end on a positive note so, ironically enough i know i'm very negative and very angry i guess i did end up feeling emotions in the end but yeah this was fairly strong like, it makes me think you should have stopped introducing all these characters and having everyone go bad for five minutes. Why didn't you just make Sophie the focus? Yeah, get rid of the other girl. Make it Sophie's the recruiter. She recruits Urara. Have it that, like, she treats Urara like a little sister, and that's why this whole thing happened. And then, like, we can hate her more and want to see her get taken down more, and she just gets to do more. She's got a cool design. The actress is good. Why the fuck did you not do anything with her? But yeah, so it's time for, shut up train. I'm not re-recording this, I'm tired. Uh, but yeah, so Rika goes to fight uh, Sophie Bell. And yeah, it works. Sophie, like I said, is genuinely creepy. Uh, it really feels like Rika has reached the completion of his arc in a way that makes sense. And as the fight goes on, you know I like the idea that halfway through the fight, they just have a debate and discussion about free will versus the desire to be better. And it works a lot better than with Yu Yu's thing because yeah, this is an actual debate to be had here. Like obviously the issue of technological interference in human development is a conversation we need to be having in the real world right now. And it kind of happens here. How much of your autonomy do you give up to become stronger or more intelligent or all that? Again, they strip away all the bullshit and just focus on these two characters and how their dynamic progresses and leads to a natural conclusion. They are on opposite sides, but you genuinely get the feeling that Rika understands Sophie's desire and will for meaning in life and how that desire did not happen. So that's what made her susceptible to the bad guys. Because she couldn't find meaning in Vanguard, like she couldn't find meaning in anything else in her perfect life, that's why she was able to fall into this sense of nihilism and just not care about anything. And Rika's passion for Vanguard and his passion to communicate that to her gets to her. And then you see that when her emotions start coming back to her, she goes fucking ape shit and it looks cool. It's creepy. It's fun. And it's entertaining. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Just be entertaining. The idea that how she gets through all this, she basically breaks herself out by realizing she does have passion. She can get invested in something in the right scenario and watching as that's what breaks her free is a really interesting take on things and a fun idea that it was genuinely nice to see be executed. And like I said, seeing Rika has now reached this point where he wants to get through to her. He wants to help her and set her free. I think it's good for the character and the new youth Burke, even if it's kind of ass because it takes too long to set up is cool and a cool way to end the fight. So yeah, that's where we're at. Was two episodes worth it for all of this? Motherfuck no. It's really bad. Um, I'll give the finale its own video. Just as I'm going to give the Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush arcs completion its own video. But I'm not really sure what to expect. Uh, but I'm not expecting much positive. It's going to be a little hard getting that vid out. Because I got my BCS next weekend. Uh, but we'll, I'll figure something out. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, for the Vanguard question below, um, I forget if I asked this last time. If I did, I'm sorry, but that was five weeks ago. Uh, BCS is here. 
Uh, what deck are you playing if you're going? Do you have one in your area? How do you feel that Wallista literally got all four tops in the Philippines a few hours ago? That's kind of nuts. Give me your thoughts about that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and let's see if they can recover in the end.